nothing is as bad as it feels and it is just temporary. So um, allowing the mind to say what it needs to say and have those thoughts, but know that you're, don't judge that, don't judge your judgment mm -hmm. um, and allow that to do what it needs to do. But remember that you are not that. Welcome to this week's episode of Leadership Soundbites with Michelle and my very special guest, Alessandra, who goes by Allie um, and Veronesi. Veronesi, is that right, Allie? Yeah. Okay, Veronesi. good. Good. Thank you. With Holy Shiver. Holy Shiver. Allie works with companies to basically take them to the next level to be better in a, def a different modalities, but all of it is around just shifting and working with energy, which I 100% love. I love that stuff. Allie and I met through someone that I'm actually um, working with in a different venture around AI, but the topic that Allie and I are talking about is not AI. <laughs> so I know you have a quote for us. Yeah, it could be AI. Um, I know you have a quote for us to kick us off. And so I'm gonna hand it over to you and then we'll have a chat around all things around that quote. Sounds good. All right. so. Nature loves courage. You make the commitment and nature will respond to that commitment by removing impossible obstacles. Dream the impossible dream and the world will not grind you under. It will lift you up. I and love that. that. I had, thank you. I had never heard it before until you sent it. Uh, and I love it, but I'm curious, what does it mean for you? Because it's definitely one of your favorites. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's so many different ways to slice it. Ultimately, I've seen in, in a variety of different uh, self-development efforts that in my personal experience and with others, that when you even make a small commitment, so a 20% commitment, you get back tenfolds of that. Mm -hmm. um, so you take that first step and you use your courage uh, with intention towards something that is calling you in your heart, whether that might be a change in career paths or a change in how you approach um, your dynamics around relationships in your family that could be impacting how that works in your work. Um, when you when you make that commitment, you get back a lot more from it. And sometimes that can be tiny shifts in how we live our lives on a daily basis, maybe even starting to meditate and these kinds of things. And other times it can be like a life shift, right? So something really major when we come to a point and a fork in the road and, and we need to really decide where is this going to take us? Are we going to uh, go with a change or are we going to continue with the awareness that this possibility exists, but we just don't have the courage to go for it just yet? Um, and it takes courage to say yes and no. Yeah. Um, so it, either way, you're going towards something. It's funny you say that. So here's here's the visual that I had, right? And I've heard this phrase before. It's like when people start a new venture or they've got their transition, and I hadn't thought about this in so long, they say burn the boats, right? Basically do it to where you can't go back. Um, and mm -hmm. that does take courage, right? Because we always want to anchor ourselves in, well, Here's my other thing that I know. Here's my security blanket, if you were. Here, here's the thing that I always did. And I know you went, you had your own journey along this that took you courage because your career has not always been with what you're currently doing now. So do you mind sharing a little bit about your background and then that courage that you exhibited, right? To be able to step into a, an, the, the lane that you're, that you're playing in now. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so I started off, in fact, um, with my ducks in a row, pursuing a very uh, beautiful traditional path in a career that uh, accompanied me for over 15 years in finance marketing, in the finance industry and insurance industry, primarily within marketing and sales. Yeah. So I got to explore a variety of different uh, corporate contexts as I was growing as a person as well. And I think I personally realized recently just what essential role 
each one of these companies had because just because you're spending over 40 hours a week with certain people within a culture with a, with a shared purpose. So um, it just played a pivotal role also in the creation of my identity. So much so that, you know, the difference between poison and medicine is in the amount. So it became very much an identity for me and a sense of safety for me mm -hmm. that um, this is why we get jobs though too. So you have to kind of regulate that balance. Um, but what ultimately happened was I'm also half Italian and I decided I wanted to move to Italy seven years ago. And I've moved back since to New York, but um, it's only been a couple months that I've been back. So I moved to Europe and that was the first time that I experienced at a light level, the removal of that safety net. And mm -hmm. um, it was, um, I had tried to find jobs over online and I was getting offers through my company and other network um, members of my network, but they were not in Italy. They were in Germany or London or other places. So I said, okay, I'm just going to go. And I'm going to fly out there. I have an apartment. I will just see what I need to do. So for the first three months I was in Italy, I would wake up in the middle of the night completely scared because I never had had the feeling of not having a job. Um, yeah. So that in itself was, but it was also so liberating because it's like it could be anything at the same time, but I couldn't appreciate that moment uh, as much as I would now. So that was the start of it. And eventually, within a few couple of months, I, I found a position in wealth management, and I continued uh, working and traveling and building out their marketing. And then moving forward, I had a few other steps in my career. And that all came to a bit of a halt uh, during COVID times, when many, many people had a, a shift in how they mm -hmm. perceived what matters to them. And in a nutshell, I had a process which showed me through meditation, which suddenly um, entered my life, that I was detracting my own value based on the external world around me, which um, is not so great because you cannot control that. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's no, it, it scatters your energy. It makes you dependent on external things in order to find your own meaning in, in who you are. So how that looks and how that looks concretely, um, if I was, you know, did really well on a certain presentation, or if I was promoted, or if I had a certain type of status within my job, I was doing great. Um, mm -hmm. If I wrote an email, not in the best way that I thought I could have, I would think about it for seven hours later, and go and ruminate and just wonder about what's happening. And um, it was just, unbalanced and the meditation journey really kind of straightened out so many different things within myself that nothing changed people couldn't really see anything different about me but I could feel finally this sense of peace and how I was managing myself therefore mm -hmm. what was around me and um really creating not in a way that is selfish towards others but really understanding my flow so instead of trying to be always there for every single situation as it arose in my inbox and going crazy over it mm -hmm. finding my own flow so understanding that am i in the right energy to respond to this or not and more often than not if you give it a half an hour sometimes things resolve themselves so there's no need to to try and, and, and constantly be, you know, saving situations, um, all sorts of things, you know, 360 degrees of breathing room, which mm -hmm. really impacted the energy with which I was producing content or, you know, leading meetings or speaking with clients. Um, there was just this sense of, I'm all right. So mm -hmm. this is the frequency. And are we going to go in it together or in, in no attachment to outcome? So um, just a continuous sense of inner purpose, which can then uh, spread out towards everything you do, because your purpose can be also within how you approach someone within mm -hmm. your values, 
and, and if you're feeling centered, then everything you do, even if it's stirring your coffee in the break room, uh, has a purpose. Mm -hmm. Interesting you say that. It's so funny. I heard you say is you couldn't really tell from the outside that things had changed, but I could feel it on the inside. And I'm going to challenge that because everything that you just described, people had to notice, even though you looked the same, mm -hmm. people had to have noticed a difference in the way they experienced you. They had to have. It's that certain, uh, as I say in French, je ne sais quoi. Yeah. Where, you it's know, just it's that like, something. Yeah. They're like, well, you seem different today. Oh, you've been different a couple of weeks now. Okay. This yeah. is you. So it is what, what I love is that you you made this change and it's funky in the space that you're in with meditation and energy. And I think you and I chatted about this there. And I think I've heard it from someone else. There's this look that people expect someone who does what you do, right? With meditation, with energy, with working with teams to have this certain look and feel. Mm -hmm. And yet I, I'm excited about what you do because the, you don't have that. And I think you're going to resonate and what you do must resonate with the population you're going out because corporate America. So mm -hmm. it's, it's this, how can I create better experiences for people where people are living better lives? Because everything that you just described was I'm not I'm, and the visual that came to mind for me is the tail wagging the dog, right? When we allow our outside environment to define who we are and how we respond and all the stuff that has to happen, it literally is like the tail wagging the dog. Mm -hmm. And in that situation, mm -hmm. you had the, you had the courage, you had the epiphany, you had the awareness and the ability to step in and just take control back. It's like, I'm, I'm going to do life. I'm going to be accountable. I'm going to do my job and do everything else, but I'm going to do it on my terms, the stuff that feels right for me. And so that I'm not stepping outside this funky space again, to where I've got these contrived expectations, right? I should do this. It has to be this way. Yeah. It has to, whatever but it's you. And when we show up as us, we create a different experience for ourselves and everyone who's around us. So you froze for a minute and you're back now. Are you back? Or are you still frozen? You're back. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, but I, I love the beauty of that. It's true. And your journey it's of what you went through. Yeah, go ahead. No, it's, it's absolutely true. And, and I also have always felt uh, interested and curious about how energy works in this kind of world. And for the longest time, I hesitated to approach it until it really, life really truly became unbearable, right? There was this sense of anxiety that was becoming normalized for a while. And I always said, I wouldn't, I would be afraid to tap into that because I don't want to become a person who doesn't want money anymore, who doesn't want to be successful. I don't want to be someone who sits under a tree and sips her tea and admires the sunset and has no sense of, you know, responsibility. And that's yeah. not at all what happens. <laughs> so it, it's, it's about coming full circle. It's about um, sort of like how acupuncture or reflexology works like you 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 press on the pinky but then you're impacting yeah. the kidney and then the, so in a way um when you meditate it seems like you're not doing much but wherever you needed to fill a certain void or a crevice or some space inside of you that needed to be neutralized or leveled out or um filled with even something good, you know, as opposed mm -hmm. to fear, maybe you fill it with love and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's different for everyone, but it, but it's so incredible how every little other part starts to adjust itself. So um, I was reading recently, it was, it was just like a pamphlet of like why teams don't perform well and, mm. um, and, and what can impact like the success of a team and a culture. And one of them was, of course, lack of trust due to unhealthy power dynamics within the leadership team. Mm -hmm. And that's normal, right? We get in the mind when we're at work and when we are um, unbalanced, which is very likely in, in this world, uh, sometimes people 
need to assert themselves and use their power. And then that is felt by the team. And then there's like this very, very different energy in certain people who get triggered by it, who then feel like now they're in this power world, war, war mm -hmm. of control. And, and all of that melts away. And then, you know, that that's one example of how all of that can, can melt away when you feel good inside, because nothing really gets to you anymore. You're elevated. Mm -hmm. And you that those obstacles remove themselves, whether that means energetically you get drifted out into a new team because now you're suddenly vibrating better and, and that mm -hmm. has attracted itself to you, or um, you're no longer a match for the trigger that is happening with that particular person you have friction with. Um, it's very subtle. There's a lot of subtleties. We think work is just operational performance and delivery. What well, we don't, but you know, that is effectively yeah. what we do to produce and to give value but underneath it we're all people with stories and families and backgrounds and complications and traumas and um especially if we're giving a lot of our time in in, in an office space uh, that means we're also maybe not so much paying attention to working on these things as much and mm -hmm. so it's a it's a perfect space to learn and mm -hmm. to to really understand what it is within you that that requires attention in order to bring yourself to a state where you can finally be enjoying what you're doing. Yeah, and, it's uh, bring we so much time, our waking time as adults with this group of people. If we're in that environment, that corporate environment, working with them, one of the things that you reminded me of, and I don't remember which workshop I was in, but it was about when we get our vibration up and it can be positive, love or above, however we want to call it, right? But we basically get out of this like cavernous yuck space that we're in and we elevate to where we're, we're seeing the world through just this brighter, positive, what's possible space. And someone described it like this, and they reminded me, Ali, when you're talking, is that when we have people throwing stuff at us and shooting at us and you know trying to undermine whatever's going on when we're in the same vibration of them we can get hit by what they're throwing our way but when we elevate our vibration and we come up they may still be throwing that stuff but we're not within shot of them anymore they may be doing it and we're not even aware of what's going on because we've we've gone to a different higher elevation energy wise and what so we have so much more control about what's going on and we don't have responsibility for anyone else. But when we elevate like that, we create a different experience for people that come in contact with us. So Absolutely. I just, I, it's, it's the coolest thing. So I agree. And I never really thought about it in corporate world um, to be able to do it on a team basis with, energy and and releasing stuff because this is the group that you spend so much time with you more, really than your, more than your loved ones for the most part unless you're working at home right absolutely and you build these you know types of friendships and connect that, that can also become friendships later and yeah. you, you have connections with people and you know each other in this way that probably no one else would mm -hmm. and um, but that, like you said, that also means that when you're so close together in one spot under pressure, that you're going to see different sides of yourselves. Um, and some people hide them behind a mask and they have a, and that's mm -hmm. exhausting as well for, mm -hmm. you know, for those oh, yeah. kinds of people, that's, that's also exhausting. Um, or it can be very triggering and, and the, the really juicy stuff, the really good information that comes from all this is you know, when you have someone who's also able to reflect back to you uh, what that trigger is, because just like in um, some of the fairy tales, like when you find out the name of the evil monster, you neutralize its power. Yes. It's the same in this context. If you can identify why this behavior, where is this coming from? At what point in my life in different form has this shown up? Mm -hmm. and created like this deep sense of anger sadness frustration mm -hmm. uh, helplessness whatever that feeling is or mind games and everything like that if you can identify where that first originated and initiated 
usually within the first six years of your childhood when subconscious was being formed, then you can neutralize it and then you can Mm -hmm. fully release it and then you can notice it and you can keep track and say, oh, wow, that thing is not working on me anymore. Like, this is incredible. I've I've overcome that. And, you know, maybe even help someone else through it. Um, And ideally, that's, uh, that's how you start the ripple effect. So work is just one of the many spaces where we continue this life journey. And because we spend so much time in it, Mm -hmm. um, it's important to recognize that it's actually not the workspace that's creating all these issues. Although we might blame our our work at times um, (laughs) for our dissatisfaction in life or for not feeling appreciated and Mm -hmm. da-da-da. But if it wasn't in a workspace, I'm willing to bet that any individual would still be unhappy elsewhere in life. So it's, um, you kind of have to understand that as well. Um, And, and it's a journey. So that is, um, that is where, that is where I'm, yeah. Love it. Now you remind me, uh, Sean Aker, the author of The Happiness Advantage, there's a TEDx that I send to leaders all the time. It's like a 12 minute TEDx that he talks about that shift. And so one of the things that he says, he says, if I know everything about your external environment, which is basically what you just said, I can only predict 10% of your future happiness because Mm. 90% of it's an inside job. Right. Mm-hmm. So you could you could shift jobs. And I remember there was one client that that was talking about moving jobs because he was dissatisfied with, you know, here's the laundry list. Right. And I told him, I said, here's the thing. You can shift to another job. But the thing that needs to change is going with you to the next job. So it's oh, not yeah. the job. It's not the job. Right. And so that's where we've got to figure out where we take control again of our happiness and what that looks like through meditation, through coaching, through whatever that is. I think meditation is a, a pretty cool path to it um, because it is an inside job. And to your point, that discovery is different for all of us on what it is, what went on, because I don't think any of us were raised by parents who were certified to be parents, right? They, they were learning with us as we were growing up. And so we tend to get exposed to things from parents that were also learning and growing as we were learning and growing. Um, And so things Mm -hmm. happen and we can have traumatic events because like you said, our subconscious, there can be one thing that happened that all of a sudden, boom, the subconscious is meant to keep us safe, right? It's not logical, it's purposeful. And so all of a sudden now it's going to say that can never happen to you again. So da, 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 this is, these are the rules that you have to live by which can be ridiculous right. rules, right? So um, yeah. it's pretty cool that we can go back and discover that stuff or release it. Um, and there's so many different ways. So I'm curious, um, as we're wrapping up, um, what are one or two things, Allie, because I so appreciate this time and you and I could probably talk for another couple hours and I can listen to what you've got going. But what are one or two things that you'd love for people to walk away with around this topic, around courage and shifting and letting release of things and increasing vibration? So all the stuff, what stands out for you? So a couple of things. Something that's really uh, a key to instantly elevating yourself to a, a higher state of consciousness in any context, but if it were to be a, an acute work situation, I think it's important to understand for, um, the realization that we are not the mind, we are the voice that listens as well. So similar to how um, we watch a movie, maybe we are not the movie, maybe we are the screen as well, mm-hmm. or the we are the paper with the pen writing on top of it. Um, so recognizing that at a higher level, there's there's a there's a plot playing out that you can control at any moment just by understanding that this is playing out for a purpose for you to understand something. Um, usually, it's about moving beyond uh, fear, right? So, am I making am I behaving out of fear or am I behaving out of 
love, self-love, mm -hmm. or just feeling that sense of completion in general. Um, so being able to step beyond that, um, that point and just recalibrating and aligning to the fact that nothing is as bad as it feels and it is just temporary. So um, allowing the mind to say what it needs to say and have those thoughts, but know that you're, don't judge that, don't judge your judgment mm -hmm. um, and allow that to do what it needs to do. But remember that you are not that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's really important, um, particularly in, in, in stressful and acute situations and particularly in, in high achievers who are not so used to uh, not being perfect. Mm -hmm. And um, and that can down some very, very interesting wormholes in mm -hmm. the mind. Uh, and I think the most important thing is that people are capable at any time in their lives of doing what they dream of. And it's not about timing. It's not about oh, in five years when I finally paid off the house and then, I, then I'll go uh, do this or, you know, when the kids are in college, then I'll do this. Um, it's about alignment and it's about feeling that life force energy active within you that makes you feel ready to just go for it, bringing it back to before, mm -hmm. taking a leap. And, and it really doesn't mean... I think oftentimes we try to plan out the whole thing. It's not, not so much about planning the whole thing. It's about just taking that first step and saying, mm -hmm. why not today? Um, and so recognizing truly that if there is a sense of, I'm not sure what it is, but something is not seen within me right now and I'm not mm -hmm. able to hear it from myself then taking any step towards understanding who you are, whether that is through meditation, breath work, sound bath, healing therapy, water therapy, there's so many modalities that we can mm -hmm. explore. And even just putting ourselves through it without even knowing what it's gonna be, but um, having that intention of discovering who we are and finding a mm -hmm. connection in our center, um, that's already courageous. And mm -hmm. that will be, bring you closer and closer to a relationship with your higher self where you're going to want to work together and, and, and do more. Um, so I love that. I think that's what I would leave. To. Yeah. I, I thank you for that because um, it, it re it reminded me of a lot of other things, Allie, than, Coach Shazad talks about, you know, the saboteurs, the voices in our head that are going on that we need to silence them, right? Because they are there. Um, and I think what what really stood out for me in that is that if you're not sitting in a space that you're going, I'm living my best life and and really believing that I'm living my best life. And then, you know, and you don't have to have a definition of what that is, but but you're grounded, you're at peace, you're, there's a surety about you. Um, then mm -hmm. do some do some exploration. You know what's missing. What's next? What else should I be doing? And if you can sit mm -hmm. in that with silence, even asking yourself before you go to bed, I want clarity on what my next step should be. I'd like want clarity on where I should be living or what I should be doing or whatever it is. And allow your subconscious allow what happens in the night when your brain is not kind of trying to control every aspect of what you're doing and thinking to just explore. Mm -hmm. Um, there are so many things that you can do. So I appreciate that because I think there's so many leaders that are high achievers that are out there chasing the corporate ladder dream that they're afraid that if they discover or step into meditation or get grounded or whatever, that they're going to lose their edge. And so what I'm going to tell you, you know, you're exactly. described it as sitting underneath the tree with the tea and everything else. You don't lose your edge you're actually sharper and crisper and more aligned and more clear than you ever were because you're not operating under this survivor stress mode that you're literally everything in your brain exactly. and who you are is firing on all cylinders and you don't lose your edge. Um, so that's the encouragement I have, but you just, you're, you're living in just 
just a be uh, just a better flow. I mean, to what you were talking about earlier. So I appreciate that. I'm um, Allie. I'm going to put I'm going to put for everyone listening Allie's contact information in the description of the podcast so people can get a hold of you. Um, and you're also the author of two books. I think I forgot to mention that, by the way. So um, yeah, you're like, oh yeah, I did write those books. So um, I did. Yeah, reach out to Allie if you have an interest in learning more. And like I said, I'll give contact information. Allie, thank you for your time. I th so enjoyed this. Um, so this has thank been Leadership you. Sound Bites. Oh, thank you. Leadership Sound Bites. Please like, share, subscribe. Um, Allie, if you've got time, I'd love to have you back on again. And, and until next time, thank you. It would be my pleasure. Thank you. Thank it's you. been so fun.